You need funding documents, unless you're like the guy or gal who says, oh, I don't need the money, I got plenty on my own. You're going to need funding documents. Okay, what are funding documents? Well, you can't ask people for money, at least in this country, without having the legal documents to ask people for money, unless you like prison. If you like prison, knock yourself out. Do it your way. But if you don't like prison, you have to have funding documents. Well, this is why you need a lawyer who has experience in the restaurant business. You need an accountant who has experience in the restaurant business because they would need to create your entity. You can do it yourself. It's not that difficult, but they need to create your entity. And the entity creation is going to be based on the type of restaurant that you create, your concept. If you're creating a franchise type concept, you're going to want, one, want a certain kind of entity, and you might want multiple. If you're creating a single unit mom and pop, you want a different. Okay? But you're going to have to create your entity. Then you're going to have to develop a strategy for going and finding the funding. Back in the day, we used to get our funding by going down to the local bank. If you haven't noticed, a lot of these banks are dead broke now. They say they don't like restaurants. Oh, we don't. We don't fund restaurants anymore. They're too high a risk. Of course, my response is, interestingly enough, the banks have all went bankrupt. So who's the high risk? The banks are the ones that are in debt. The banks are the ones that got bailed out, not restaurants. So who's high risk? The restaurant business is a cash business. Actually, it's not all that high risk if the bankers would simply realize it's a cash business. It's real simple. But we used to go to the bank to get the money. So you had to have a certain kind of business plan that was highly tactical. Then you'd get the small business administration to give you an SBA loan. That's how it was done. Today, in 2012, we don't go to the bank as often. It's interesting because we're in the middle of a bad economy here in the United States and in markets around the world, for that matter. But I believe that we're in the absolute best time in the history of restaurants to deal with getting funding for restaurant deals. 2013, just around the corner, I think is going to be one of the most successful years in history for restaurants. People have to eat. But how we find funding is we now go through what's called angel investors. Let me tell you what an angel investor is. An angel investor is a rich guy or gal who is tired of the stock market. I can't trust what that is anymore. They're tired of bonds. They're tired of putting their money in a bank. They're tired of all the stuff that happens with those types of investments. And they say, you know what? I like investing in an idea, one that has an IP connection to it. Remember we talked about IP, which in the restaurant world is franchising, so that literally I can invest my money and that idea can grow. And interestingly enough, franchisees are a different kind of investor, really, when you think about it. So even though I've only invested once, they got dozens of people that are investing in the concept, which are building the brand. That's where we're at in the restaurant world. Angel investors. It's usually an individual person. Their threshold of pain, if you will, for the investment is usually somewhere between $100,000 and $250,000. They don't want to give you half a million dollars. Okay. Too much risk. They also don't want to be the only person in the deal. They want you to go get multiple people. They also don't want to get too much less than 100 grand because the reality is it's not worth my time to think about it. I got a ton of money. I don't want to have to play that game. So the window of pain, if you will, is about 100 to $250,000. Well, 
how do you get that investment to work? Well, you go find the angel investor and you show them, your, you give them your elevator pitch, you show them your investor presentation, you hope to get to where you can show them the business plan. But one thing you're going to need is you're going to need a funding document. In some instances we use what's called a subscription agreement. And that funding document allows me to ask people for money without getting thrown in jail. So it's not just, you know, hey, can you give me cash? Because then, interestingly enough, if the deal doesn't work, you've got a problem. With a subscription agreement, it's got what's on there, what's called a big boy letter. And the big boy letter basically says, listen, this is an investment. It's a concept. It's an idea. There are no guarantees. You're investing money, hoping and praying, just like I am, that this thing works. And if it does, we'll make money. And if it doesn't, tough. It happens. At which point, a document like a subscription agreement will protect you, and it will also protect the investor. Now, there's other types of documents. Lawyers, accountants, consultants. We can go over those documents based on what your personal needs are. But either way, you have to have those pieces if you expect to be able to ask someone other than your friends and family for money. I can ask my friends and family for money, and it could be a personal loan, and I don't have to deal with funding documents. But if you're asking people that aren't your friends or family, and there is a definition for that by federal law of what friends and family is, but other than that, you need funding documents. And that's how restaurants get funded. And I think if you look at where the industry is going, that's how they're going to get funded more and more and more over the next 10 years. I think we're at a point where it's about time for you all to go get some money. Let's do that.